Welcome to the October 1st, 2018 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of the Town of Raymond. The Zoning Board of Appeals will come to order and we do have a quorum this evening. I'm now going to do a roll call starting on my left. Patricia Beaton. Joanne Stinson. Led Sorelli. Steve Warshaw. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chair or vice chair this evening if you are unable to see or hear. The board works from a published agenda and we'll be considering tonight's items in the following order. Order: We have um, <coughs> the tabled application from Jennifer and Ronald Finney et al. on Zero Canal Road, MLB 4720A00, Zone LRR1. And this is an administrative appeal of the CEO's decision to issue a building permit to Tammy Knights for purposes of citing a mobile home on the referenced property. In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinances or state law. After the board votes on the merits of each application, it will prepare a written notice of a decision. Because the notice of decision may substantially affect any appeals rights, and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regards to a specific application not leave until the board has completed its discussion. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual right to file any appeal, you must be certain that the board's record evidences your appearance this evening in opposition <coughs> and the basis for your opposition. All persons speaking, including representatives of the applicant and members of the public, are asked to stand at the microphone to sign the speaker's sheet, state their name, address, and affiliation with the application for, opposed, or neutral. All persons speaking shall address all remarks or questions to the chair. The meeting is not over until the board has formally adjourned. Any discussion not included on the meeting agenda or accepted by the board is to be held <coughs> until after adjournment or conducted outside the meeting room. And to pick up where we left off last, the public hearing had been closed. The board tabled um, <coughs> the application requesting that the board of selectmen research the excerpt providing in the application to see if it has any official standing in regards to the rules, regulations, ordinances in the town of Raymond. Since then, we've received <coughs> in order um, an updated and new allegations of permit violations regarding this application, a letter from Sue Look, the town clerk, regarding the research that was requested, a letter from attorney Gary Vogel regarding the research um, that was done, and then finally, a letter in response by Sue Look regarding the letter from Attorney Vogel about the research. So with that, may I suggest, and I'll ask you, um, Attorney Katsapigas, the uh, procedure or the process that we follow tonight. <clears throat> I can suggest that we, uh, where we had closed the public hearing and we had requested the research, on the excerpt, we could deal with that part of the process first and get that out of the way. Because if we were to find one way, there would be no need to go on to the permitting process. If we find the other way, there is. Well, that's certainly one way to look at it. Uh, you certainly can, can look at the materials that have been submitted. You asked for the town clerk to do that research. Uh, she has. You might want to hear comments on the research, on the research only. Uh, from parties, that's up to you. With the public hearing having been closed, uh, any comment by the public in, in deliberation is at the discretion of the board. Okay. So, uh, but yes, you could start at that point. Uh, I mean, the central question was whether or not this use is permitted. Are, are manufactured houses, uh, is manufactured housing, type one manufactured housing, permitted in the Shoreland District? Uh, the statement made was that the town had a form that was in the code office, and that form <coughs> referred to as the excerpt of mm -hmm. district, district re um, regulations for residential development uh, is attachment three to the initial appeal. The question was, was that adopted by the town? Uh, 
This is a town meeting town. Ordinances are adopted by and amended by and repealed by the town meeting. The warrants are prepared by the, plan by the board of uh, selectmen, select persons. Uh, the board of select persons can adopt regulations that might supplement the ordinance. They can't amend the ordinance with those regulations. Uh, my understanding is, and, and they speak for themselves, but my understanding is the town clerk looked to see if there was any record of town meeting having adopted the excerpt and found there was not, looked at the selectman's records, the select person's records, um, to see if there were anything going back to 2002 to indicate that that excerpt had been adopted by the board of selectmen and found that there was nothing. I think that's from the two uh, letters that right. Ms. Look had put together as town clerk. So those statements are before you. And you have Mr. Um, Attorney Vogel's uh, concern and objection to which uh, Ms. Look responded this morning. Correct. <clears throat> Mr. Vogel, would you like to speak on behalf of your letter? I would, thank you. Mm -hmm. second to sign in here okay could you give us one second I apologize Steve hasn't had the opportunity to see this letter from Sue look the last one I nor have, have I so I, I was hoping yours I was hoping that you might read it absolutely we'll do that after you say your thank you share my copy with Attorney Vogel. That's Thank fine. you very much. Thank so you. Ben Smith, sorry. Oh, you and for the record, while he's signing in, um, the in I will generalize, and anyone help me if you see it any differently, the research that was done, again, Attorney Katsafigas uh, just spoke to this, <clears throat> found some updated ordinances to put in the record that were passed, um, but there was nothing found that related to the business at hand this evening, um, any changes in the ordinances that had not been put in the official uh, books and on the website. <clears throat> that was their finding. <coughs> So um, I just think, you know, I assume that others here tonight who are interested in this appeal probably haven't seen that letter either. Would it make sense to, for you to read it and then we can, you know. The first one, no, the research? No, no, I think people have seen that. I, the one that was issued this morning. Okay, you want me to read that before you sure. comment on it? Very good. Uh, this is from Sue Look, the Raymond Town Clerk. And this is RE letter dated September 28, 2018 from Gary D. Vogel pertaining to the appeal of the Code Enforcement Officer's decision on building permit application number 2018-041 for Tammy Knights, 5 Canal Road, Map Lot 47020A. Dear Mr. Chairman and members of the ZBA, <clears throat> I would like to first note that I was asked to find any changes that were approved at town meeting to the land use ordinance and to the shoreland zoning provisions with particular emphasis on shoreland, LRR1 and LRR2 zones and further to ascertain whether or not said approved changes were incorporated into these documents. My findings are in the attached document entitled Shoreland R LRR1 LRR2 Changes 2002 to 2018. In reviewing the town meeting minutes back to 2002, I found no instance where the town body voted to consider nor approve the excerpt of district regulations for residential development. I likewise reviewed the select board minutes for the same time period and found no instance where this document was presented to the select board for consideration. As Mr. Vogel points out, the town of Raymond has adopted a town meeting, select board town manager form of government. While it may be true that there is precedent for the select board to 
promulgate administrative regulations that supplement the town zoning ordinances, I found no record where the select board considered any such action. Sincerely, Susan Look. Thank you. So, um, as you know, we received the original information that the town clerk submitted and found the question about the whether or not the actual zoning chart excerpt, you know, had been uh, adopted or approved by the selectmen, you know, to be uh, missing from that research, submitted the letter on Friday. The town clerk has come forward this morning, you know, indicating that her, that she did review the minutes of the board, you know, the select board to, um, uh, and found no instance of the uh, select board you know, reviewing or approving that um, that chart. Um, so, you know, there isn't a tremendous amount to talk about with respect to that. Um, uh, obviously, we haven't seen, you know, the minutes, but, you know, we weren't asking the, I don't think this board was asking the town clerk to come forward with all of the minutes. We asked the town clerk to do that so that we all didn't have to do that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, th I do find it to be unusual that that, that that excerpt had been in place for many, many years on the town's website and published in the, t you know, posted in the town office and um, this, these issues haven't come up or no one has addressed it, but um, we do appreciate the, uh, you know, this board tabling that so that work could be done and that uh, for the clerk to, to address that. Um, if you can... Um, you know, bear with me. The um, I just did want to mention the additional information that was submitted by the appellants here. Um, you know, this information was you know, which if as you go through it, contains ZBA response. You know, on each page. You know, and and we're not looking for the ZBA to you know to give us a response on each of these things. This was, you know, one of the issues that is before you, is whether the application was complete. And we just thought that this would be helpful, you know, in order to do that. We're hoping that you'll be able to make findings about whether the application was complete. We think it's, you know, there are serious questions about that that were presented at the last meeting. The information that's here that was put in this information, this um, submission, is really sort of more of a recap of that, uh, but done in a way that was organized and, and we think would be helpful to the board to address that issue as to whether or not the application was complete. It's a very important and sort of cogent um, issue because since the date of our last meeting, the town adopted a moratorium that prohibited, you know, mobile homes in this zone, recognizing that, that this is a problem and an issue. Um, and, you know, to uh, so the question of whether or not an application was, submit, was complete to allow a mobile home to come in in the zone where the town has serious concerns about whether or not they should be there as evidenced by the moratorium is important. I mean it's important to everyone here and um, and we think it's a you know it's an issue that this board should you know should certainly spend some time and focus on and we would appreciate if you would you know consider that and and make specific findings. Thank you. <clears throat> so First, what the board needs to consider, um, I don't know if there's any further questions on this point, but is to deal with the excerpt and the research that we had done. Is there a motion on the table? Regarding whether the manufactured home, mobile home, was allowed in LRR1 zone on the research that we had done. Is that the appropriate way to put it? Oh, well, right that's different. one way. That's one way to do it. That's uh, if you want to have a motion, or you could just have a discussion and see where you wind up. Okay. And uh, Is that it? could become part of the larger motion on the on the appeal, whether to. Okay. Grant I was going to have a discussion no, after a motion, but we could do it either way. We can start with discussion. Um, the, uh, the, uh, what it, what it appears to me is that that, that, that chart that's been referred to. The excerpt? The excerpt is just that. It's intended for informational purposes, not intended as, as either a provision of the law or a provision of the land use ordinance 
or uh, of the shoreland zone, uh, zoning. Uh, so for our purposes, um, I don't think it, ha it has any merit with regard to the discussion tonight. I agree with Steve. I, I read carefully, carefully what Sue did, and um, I don't believe it has any merit either. I did read everything that Sue provided, and the ordinances are clear. So, yeah, I would I would agree with with all of you in that they did a uh, Scott started with a thorough <coughs> research process um, himself and other folks in the town office. Then it went on to Sue Look, who did an extremely thorough job in looking through the ordinances, and this was this excerpt was never adopted. It appears as an official ordinance or regulation of the town of Raymond. So given that, does the board want to make a, a finding then, uh, move to make a finding that this uh, excerpt was not adopted as an official ordinance of the town of Raymond? So moved. Second. Did Mary get that? Okay. You want us to vote on that? I think you should at this yeah. point. All in favor? All opposed? 4 0. <coughs> Do you want to move on to the, the overall appeal now? Yes. And uh, maybe address the additional information that's been. When was that additional information submitted? Was that. Uh, September 26th? Which additional information? The this was sorry. this past week we received the additional <coughs> information from Attorney Vogel the on behalf of the appellants. That piece. Um, it doesn't say when I, I, look I at the email. don't, I would have, it was sent in time to be mailed to you, so it was um, Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. It was Tuesday. Um, <coughs> Tuesday before four o'clock that I received this from um, right. and we and, had it in the mail on Wednesday. And we had a situation where a great deal of information was provided, excuse me, at the first hearing on July 30th. <coughs> and this appears to be some um, possibly, I, I believe there were five new allegations of uh, potential permit violations and maybe a little bit more updated information regarding the ones that were presented to us at the last meeting. So how we proceed with this is we can accept it and go through it. You can accept it and add it or you, you, or you can, uh, it's entirely within your discretion or you can say they filed an appeal at the last meeting, they provided more information and more claims and after the public hearing was closed, they provided still more claims. That's one way to characterize it. Or another would be simply uh, we'll accept the additional information and reopen the public hearing and uh, discuss those claims as well. That's so if we accept all the new documentation, we do have to open the public well, hearing. Well, it would, it would seem they're raising new claims right. that, they, that weren't argued before. And I don't know that the property owners are here, but. Yeah. Are the knights here? Okay. Yeah. All right. So but can it, the board it seem appropriate to yeah. at least allow, if you're going to allow new yeah. information and at least allow the Knights to review it if they haven't already and to comment on it, mm -hmm. uh, would seem to be fair if you're going to allow new information in at this time. How does the board feel about allowing the new information in at this time? Uh, I, think I think you I should allow it. I'm sort of reluctant to do that. While I appreciate Attorney Vogel's effort and um, the organization, the splendid organization with which it's present, been presented. Um, I think we clo we had a we had a hearing on the appeal, and um, that's where we stand. That's where you stand. Yeah, I, I'm. I am. Well, again, I read it. I thought I thought it was great, but I don't think uh, it it adds anything significant to our discussions or our decision making. I think it would be fair to uh, let the Knights see it. Oh, sure. 
Oh, absolutely. And so include it. Included. included, then that's part of it. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd rather err on the side of um, looking at more information, I think, at this point, just to make sure. The one thing thorough. is, you, you have not advertised this as a public hearing tonight. So the public would not be warned that there would be a hearing tonight. Uh, <coughs> one thing you could do if you're going to reopen it is continue this and advertise another public hearing. And it would give them a chance to read the information well, as well. Perhaps that would too, but, but just to, the public hasn't been warned that you might mm -hmm. have a public hearing tonight on this. That's fair. That's fair. Thank you. Uh, Can I say something? Have you folks have you folks seen the new updated information? You have not. It doesn't seem fair that he reopened. Please come to the podium. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tammy Knights, the property owner. Um, I don't, I oppose this. We had the hearing. I agree with um, Mr. Warshaw. Is that how you pronounce your name? Um, we had the hearing. He brought forth what he wanted. There was one of you that wasn't sure about it. It was my understanding that as um, Mr. Warshaw had said it was that piece, just like Sue Look had said, that's what you guys asked. You had closed it. You'd asked for just that piece. And he did a good job for his appellants, but for his appell appellants had asked to at least keep it open. To me, that's looking for more time to come up with more stuff. You guys did not, I feel that you're opening again. I, I feel like we've hashed it over. You guys had gone over all that stuff, and it just gave, it's unfair to us. He, he got more time to come up with more stuff. I do not agree with you opening it up again. If we had known this, we might have hired a lawyer ourselves. I mean, it's, it's unfair for us to, in my opinion, to reopen and rehash all of this all over again because we don't even have counsel. And if we had known that, we might have sought counsel. Thank you. Hey, can I suggest, Attorney Katsafigas, that we could, most of the um, <coughs> alleged permit violations have already been addressed at the last, at the public hearing. Could we go through all of those that were brought up at the last hearing and address those? Sure. Well, there, certainly no harm in what was brought up at the last hearing. Uh, the question is, do you want to go on to the additional ones that were brought up in this additional information? Correct. Um, you can go through what was brought up before and then defer dealing with the new information if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's entirely up to you. The board comfortable with that? Okay. Sure. Do these, does the information prove that the application is incomplete? Say that again? Any of the new information? Um, <clears throat> well, we, I guess we can't discuss the new inf information at this time unless we hold another public hearing to allow for discussion on that. So all we can consider tonight is what was brought to us at the public hearing on July 30th. 2018. The interested parties are the Knights and the appellants. If they agree to go forward on you know, tonight and comment and if they don't feel prejudiced. That's an option. That's an option, but I think you've just heard. But that's a, you know, that's a, this is all at the discretion of the board. Yeah. Can I, can I make one, one Please, point? please do. Very briefly. When we were here last month in, in uh, or not last month, uh, last hearing in, at the end of July, there were, obviously there were the, the issue about the, the excerpt and you've, you've addressed that. 
The other issue, though, that was brought up that was un unclear and unresolved at the time was the ownership of the entrance of the driveway. And I know there were some questions and discussions about that, you know. And since then, I mean, we have Louise Lester here who, who um, can testify to that. She's looked at her records. Um, that information was not available. I think it's very, it is very, um, you know, important to this overall appeal. And it might be very useful. I think that is one piece of information from this, um, from the new information that's submitted that um, would be useful probably for everybody, you know, to hear about. And so, you know, if you are going to consider a limited scope or, or to get into this, I think that's, um, it's a simple issue. It's one that certainly that the Knights had notice about from talking about at the last, you know, at the last meeting. Um, and um, and I just think that that's you know an important issue that was left unresolved at that time because all the information wasn't available. Thank you. And that would that would be included in um, the information that we received last yeah, the new, hearing. The new information. Well, well, no, no, no. The the driveway issue was, was raised was raised, but last was time. never resolved. Right. And if we're going to work, if we're going to resolve it. We, got, we end up in the same place as, as Attorney Fikatsafiakis suggests. Here's, here's the issue with, if somebody comes in with an application for a permit mm -hmm. and has colorable right title or interest, some connection to the property, then you have, you, then, then they have standing to bring the application right. and you can hear it, they have RTI, right title or interest. Um, when you start fighting about covenants, easements, boundaries, that's for the folks with the black robes to describe, to, to judge. It's not for this board. There's a case, Whiting v. Seavey, which goes back to 1963, talking about that. And, uh, you know, I think what, where the board was headed, if I recall correctly, was let's get this resolved at the time the building permit issues, and if the Knights come in with the deed that, you know, the survey showing that they have the right to the driveway, then Scott, the CEO, can issue the building permit for that and can allow the construction to go forward. Uh, otherwise, they have to make other arrangements for it on their property, and I think the Knights agreed to that. I think that's where we left it, yes. uh, that this board wasn't going to determine who had title to this because that's beyond its, its authority, <laughs> beyond its jurisdiction. Uh, they have right title or interest in the lot, and if they can't prove where the driveway is supposed to go in at the time it's supposed to, then they'll have to put it somewhere else on their lot. Correct. I believe that's what this board said. Uh, now, if you want to go on and, and further get yourself into a dispute where you might not have jurisdiction, uh, you, you're free to go there. But I don't suggest you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correct. Because Scott was to handle the that resolution of it. Yeah, that, that was... <clears throat> not for us to determine, because they had other options. Correct. That was, that's my recollection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we still haven't determined if, based on the paperwork we had submitted from the hearing of July 30th, were there any outstanding issues that we could deal with tonight and raise and then relook at what we want to do with the new information that was brought for us this week. Okay, so you're so the, the decision of the board is to either address things as they are and as we left them. Correct. Or open it up to everything new with the new information. Well and, to and pretty much open up a public new hearing and or what I was saying, and I apologize if I'm not being clear, is to address any outstanding issues from the last meeting without opening up, opening up the new public hearing, get those dealt with and done, mm -hmm. and clarify if we're, um, for example, is the driveway issue resolved, and then decide based on what's left that was new information that the Knights have not seen if we want to proceed to uh, schedule another public hearing to address those, the new information that was brought before us or not. Not have another, not accept this information. 
So for example, uh, if you go through the problems with the building permit, <coughs> first there was whether the, let me just give me one minute here. The foundation requirement, that was one, was that settled? And I recall Scott, the code enforcement officer, saying that he had provided the proper information for what was required mm -hmm. and he would assure that um, that would not proceed unless the proper foundation per the land use ordinance, Article 9, Section K, Item 1C, was followed. <coughs> So it's whether we want to proceed and walk through all of those. Have we sufficed that there's no problem with the permit by the board based on the information we had in the last meeting? We didn't resolve the um, outstanding, well, we didn't resolve and answer Mr. Volga's questions about whether the permit had violations in it that made it incomplete so that we could not accept the permit. The application, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the permit that Scott oh. provided, okay. these folks have appealed that the permit right. should have, have been signed off on. So we could, we could walk through them and see if we still have issues that are outstanding or not from the last meeting. So again, incomplete foundation section, incomplete roof, se roof section, proper plans did not accompany the form. This is from the last meeting. Eight sections left blank for both the trailer and addition on the building permit. No information on location of and, pr and proper plans with regards to the four <coughs> bedrooms or the trailer or the addition. No electrical permit, false information on the property ownership on the subsurface wastewater application, shoreland zoning falsely marked as no, two inconsistent plans for lot A for building and wastewater, inadequate evidence of proper drainage on subsurface wastewater disposal system application, permit was issued without a DEP certified person to oversee activity of soil disturbance and was DEP certified person was not included in the permit application. <coughs> so we had Scott speak to these things, but we never made a motion or decided as to whether the permit was complete or not based on um, these alleged violations. So we well, could walk through one at a time. Well, I think Scott really went over everything and basically covered everything in the last meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's um, it's kind of redundant to ask him to do it again. Well, is there a motion on the table or further discussion? Mm -hmm. well, I'm can I just address that point briefly? So in yeah, one what, one we're, one what we're essentially asking is for you to do the deliberation. I mean, not Correct. so that, yes, you heard from the appellants, you heard from Scott. I mean, just because the code enforcement officer says it doesn't mean that it's, I mean, that's why we're here for an appeal. He issued, he issued a permit. We're challenging it because we don't think that it was complete. You have the reasons why he said he did it, but you need to deliberate over are, are those sufficient or are they not? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Is this open for public this is, this no. is The public hearing has not been reopened. Well, I didn't think so. That's true. Can I we, comment to him? No. Not at this time. Uh, what, what I'm going to do, let's rein this in a little bit, and I'm going to walk through what was said. We're going to walk through these. Okay. And we're going to decide. You can either vote on them individually, yeah. or you could uh, just reach consensus on each and take an up or down vote. And yeah. it's up to you. Yeah. Let's, let's have it. 
let's go through them one at a time. Okay. And try and see if we can and see, see if we take a vote at the end. Okay. See if we can reach consensus okay. on them. Okay. So we'll walk through them. As I said, the foundation. Um, Scott gave them the requirements for the foundation, and he said they must meet these uh, the the ordinance. Again, it was nine. Article K. nine, section K, item one C. Thank you. Can Scott comment on these? Do you have a question for Scott? No, I just. This is what he this is say. what he said. That's what I'm walking okay. through. So that was one. Um. <coughs> Does anybody have anything to say about that? That any that's part of the permit. They have to they make the application and for them to get their occupancy they have to abide by that so we that was covered right. there's well, anyone that still has an outstanding question about the foundation let's just back up Violation. one second sure. and, uh, and that is you are hearing this de novo that means you get to decide it all over again right uh, Scott issued the permit the permit's been appeal appealed from and so these arguments have been made about deficiencies in the permit and also in the, sh in the uh, subsurface wastewater disposal application. You're going through these one by one. You get to be in, stand in Scott's shoes. Did he do the right thing? Mm -hmm. And you get to reissue the permit if, or deny the permit. That's entirely with, up to you. It's our decision. If, if you make the decision, you could say that you would grant the permit with conditions, and I think one thing I suggested was if you were going to find that this was all right, that the uh, foundation uh, approval was fine, that uh, you could attach a condition that before a certificate of occupancy issues, they, they, they construct the foundation in, in accordance with the ordinance, if you were going to find on that. So that is the condition in finishing in the, in the, as far as the foundation goes, that is what I would put down as a condition, that it must meet Article 9K1C for proper foundation for the land use, in the land use ordinances. Okay. Um, I agree. I, I guess, yeah, too many years of school. When I when I uh, look at, look at this, and where it says foundation, uh, it says type of soil, sandy gravel, but then there's nothing else. There's nothing about footings. There's nothing about a foundation. Nothing. That while I while I trust Scott and I have no issue with Scott, I don't know that I don't have any idea what the foundation is going to look like. And I don't have any idea what's in Mr. Knight's mind, or in Tammy's mind, Mrs. Knight's mind, um, with, with, with regard to that construction. And uh, I guess I would like to know those things. Are you so comfortable? Oh, I'm sorry. So you're saying that the application is incomplete as and far as the foundation goes? As far as I can tell, uh, I'm looking right at it. And in my eyes, yes, it's incomplete. I can say that I'm comfortable with there are two options for the foundation under 9K1C mm -hmm. and uh, Scott will not issue, um, it'll, have to, it'll have to be inspected and he will not issue an occupancy permit if those are not met. That would be our conditions. I haven't heard anybody agree to that or anything. I agree. Well, we can put those. No, 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 that's no, no, our no, decision, no. right? We, we can we, put those we, conditions on. Uh, okay. To assure that it's been met. Do we want to vote individually? Or you want to walk through them, you guys? And I then just walk through. Let's it. go through yeah. them. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> then the next one was an incomplete roof section. I personally am not sure that we addressed this or had discussion about this. Um, <coughs> said it was 
set suggested that the roof section must be a pitched roof and there was concern about the year of the manufactured home being prior to a pitched roof which is required under article 4 section C 2J mm -hmm. and so I will ask Scott do we have any information as to whether this has a pitched roof I have seen, well, I've seen pictures of it that the pitch roof do, does exist. Um, again, if by looking on that, if it's required that I need an engineer to go through it and give me a letter saying that it meets, the, uh, doesn't overload the frame of the house. The other thing, it was also completed in another town. Um, I have asked if they produce any permits from that town um, that would reinforce what was done there uh, otherwise I would have to ask for an engineer to look at it and say that it was it was um, it meets the load requirement of the of the uh, mobile home mm -hmm. if I may yes article 4 section C item 2j is the rural district correct yes and LRR well RR district section D2K says the same thing. That's for the rural residential district. Both of those are under the land use ordinance. But this isn't in the rural district, and this isn't in the rural residential district. This is in the shoreline district. nothing that addresses LRR1. this under LRR1. Okay, so there is no roof pitch standard under the LRR1. That's correct. Did you receive the new stuff? Yeah, all right. So if there's no roof pitch standard, then we don't have to. Uh, I, I'm throwing it out there. Right. I'm not no, making anyone's okay. argument. I'm just looking at the code and what it requires. It, the, the town has a larger than required shoreland zone in the lots within the shoreland zone. It's mm -hmm. not within the rural district. It's not within the rural residential district under the land use ordinance. That's my understanding. Yeah, I, there is a mobile home standard but I believe in land use but I believe it just addresses the um, foundation requirement correct it doesn't it doesn't address the pitch roof requirement and when you look at the application form for the building permit which the appellant submitted um, it doesn't say anything about roof pitch it talks about truss or rafter size sheathing type roof covering type and span and size so it's not requested and apparently not required in the district. That's for the board to determine. Okay. But I'm pointing out that it doesn't say anything. Okay, that's a fair the point. The LRR one. Yep, that's a fair point. Any further discussion on no. the roof pitch? As Mr. No. Katsafigas has pointed and the out. Public comment like the boy does? <coughs> the public hearing's been closed on these okay. these issues. Any further discussion on the roof pitch? No. Just a, just a question for Attorney Katsafiakis. Uh, the, uh, if, if it's in the land use ordinance, this, the pitch roof business, uh, but not in the shoreland zoning provisions, um, are, uh, is the uh, applicant bound by the land use uh, the answer is it depends. There may be some town-wide provisions, but this is a particular standard with regard to the rural and rural residential provision uh, districts. So it, you can have a you can have a shoreland zoning ordinance that's an overlay on existing town zoning, yes. or you can have one that's a standalone. And yours appears to be more of the standalone type mm -hmm. rather than an overlay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, essentially what you're saying is that because there's no mention of it in the shoreland zo uh, uh, zoning provisions, it is not an issue? Correct. Okay. That would be my advice to the board. 3.3 was proper plan did not accompany form. <coughs> Following hand-drawn cross-section was submitted. However, an actual floor plan for the proposed addition was not submitted with the building permit. My recollection of the discussion per the last meeting was that all decisions had not ma been made to the layout 
of the addition at this point. <clears throat> there was not a requirement of a floor plan, obviously, of the manufactured home. Um, that as decisions were made, the proper paperwork would be submitted to the code enforcement officer to ensure uh, that it met the regulations. Any discussion on that one? Concerns, issues? No. Um, no it's not really part of this. That's the future building, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Once again, I, I would I would ask that that also be added as a condition. What? That the floor plan be submitted. Go ahead. For the floor plan for the addition? Yes. I know mine just broke the athletic statement. Next one. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <coughs> okay, um, eight sections left blank for both the trailer and addition on building permit. I believe this is similar to what we just discussed. Um, Scott addressed the trailer that. Um, <clears throat> he does not in inspect the trailer manufactured home. And so the rest of it would fall in line with a floor plan, I believe, for the addition. That's where we would get that information. Floors, exterior walls, interior walls, ceilings, roof, chimneys, heating, plumbing. Any comments, discussion on that? No. no information on location of and improper plans with regards to the four bedrooms, trailer or addition. <coughs> Three point five. No information on location of and improper plans with regards to the four bedrooms, trailer or addition. Because the trailer has a length dimension that is less than or equal to 90 feet, and also because it has a width dimension that is less than or equal to 18 feet, this dwelling unit would necessarily be classified as an entry-level single-wide trailer. Online research indicates that entry-level single-wide trailers will rarely include more than two bedrooms. As such, it can only be assumed that the 12 by 28 addition is being built to provide additional bedroom space. To that end, the submitted cross-section does not contain any details with regards to outside windows, interior walls, etc. That was, um, which said that the uh, permit was then incomplete, the application. And I believe that would fall under if a condition, as Steve mentioned, for a floor plan, a complete floor plan by the 12 uh, for the 12 by 28 edition would suffice to meet those requests. Comments by the board? So what are we saying? That it was incomplete because it didn't have that? Yes. Okay. Wasn't enough information. Nope. Okay. So we are saying that the application is incomplete? No, we're saying that there wasn't enough information <coughs> in, the, in the plans, in the permit, regarding the four bedrooms, the trailer or the addition. And Steve had recommended a floor plan for the 12 by 28 addition, which we can put down as a condition. Okay. And again, as far as the trailer manufactured home, my understanding was Scott did not have the authority to inspect that. If, yeah. if it's a manufactured housing, yes, I don't have any authority in there. If they did renovations, then yes, I do, depending on the renovations. But as a standalone trailer, no. Would you describe this 12 by 28 addition as a renovation? No, I'm talking about the trailer itself. The oh, addition, the, I have authority. The 70 by 14. Yeah, that one I have no jurisdiction. The addition, well, yes. Well, I'm asking, I'm, I guess what I'm asking, Scott, is. Um, by adding the 12 by 28 edition, they are significantly changing 
the uh, uh, 70 by 14 original manufacturer at home. Um, I'm quite sure they're going to have to bust through some walls if they're going to connect it somehow. Mm. By the connection that I saw on and the drawing, that they did no openings in the home itself. They removed one of the, I believe, one of the doors that was on there, and that's what they used to come into that. So there was no modification of the trailer frame, per se. Okay. The load changes, yes, but not any structural uh, construction within the I trailer itself. Okay. Tricia, would you like to comment? Yeah, I have a question. Okay, I understand that you, that we are not able to uh, question the manufactured home, mm -hmm. but the information on the addition that's being built. It's already built. It was built prior to in another town. The addition as well? Correct. Those both pieces were shipped down here. That's why I asked that they have to show me some, if they can't show me any permits from the town where it, Got it. was managed when they built it, okay. I would use that as a part of deciding whether or not I wanted to go in there. Would I just want to see the connection? Or do I see that the information, the inspections that were done were adequate? the other town then all I would look at is just the connection that was something that I haven't it's one of those things I'm going to when I see the addition to decide whether or not I in the transportation and it may have ruined something okay then I would ask that so both fixed, pieces were built away from here correct or have and, there, and it still is up in the air as whether or not they're putting that addition on yet or not and to clarify, you said if renovations were done to the manufactured home, you then would have the right to inspect it. Yeah, the, from my understanding that the, that the renovations were purely interior or cosmetic, I don't, there weren't anything structural, they never changed the windows, but it was more of a, um, more of a cosmetic or, you know, I'll say a renovation interior wise. And I have talked to state electrical inspector as to how I would look at that if that was the case um, and he said basically you look at it as if it was a single family home wiring is done the same there's nothing different between that and the manufactured housing according to him and I like I said I don't that's one of the things that they do have to I asked that they give me a, a uh, what was done to it um, as if they didn't do it but someone else did so it was just a I just wanted clarification as to what was done to see if there's anything that I can even look at. Okay, so you will be getting the permits from the other town. Yeah, if they, yeah. And if they don't, then I have to address it accordingly. Okay. And that's customary. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. 3.7, false information on property ownership, subservice wastewater. And this was where David Knight signed off. And the actual owner was determined to be Tammy Knight. I do know that, let's see. Hang on. I believe you can have a contractor sign off. Or an agent of the owner, as long as they're authorized. So, if I may ask Tammy Knight a question, was David Knight authorized as a contractor and agent to sign off? Yeah. Did you, you as the owner of the property, yeah. you can step right up, please. Did yes. you authorize David Knight as the contractor or an agent to sign off? Yes. On that? Thank you. Okay. One additional in matter with regard to that. Um, this is with regard to a subsurface wastewater disposal permit application and, and format. Um, those aren't reviewable by this board. Those don't get appealed to this board. That's out of our jurisdiction. So you can, you know, for both reasons. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Thank you. 
<laughs> Shoreland zoning falsely marked as no. Is that within our jurisdiction to consider? Scott, address. That's on the HHE 200. Right. And so far as I know, HHE 200s are not appealable for the Board of Appeals. That's, that's the Shoreland you know, the Subsurface Wastewater Disposal Act form. Okay. That's no what right it is. The, there's no right of appeal under the subsurface wastewater disposal rules that I've seen to the Board of Appeals. <coughs> so then the next one, two inconsistent plans for Lot A for building and wastewater. Building permit shows single family trailer and wastewater shows two family, family duplex and orientation of both are inconsistent with each other. Can we address that? I guess the wastewater is that also is a wastewater issue. This is this is yep, yep. this is an argument as to the plan, the, uh, the drawing on the plan that accompanies the wastewater. wastewater. Well, no, not really, um, because it's on the application for the wastewater uh, right. disposal, right. the HHE two hundred. Right. Which is it's not on the uh, it's not on the drawings, on the application itself. Um, the system is des designed to serve a multiple family dwelling. Number of units, four. That's the plan accompanying the building permit application? It's the wastewater, it's the HHE 200. Right. You're saying it's out of our jurisdiction. Well, you, okay, so we're talking about inconsistent plans? Yes. yes. So this is in the plan. I'm not talking about drawings now. Okay. It's that the plan submitted as part of the building application doesn't show the... <coughs> the, the sketch? It's the sketch plan of lot division. Is that yes. what we're talking about? that it shows a duplex on lot A? Yes. And I believe when that was brought up last time, it was because that was just a concept. The duplex was a concept and not an actual, am I remembering that correctly? Or? Well, he didn't, um, as far as the other lot, he didn't know for sure when this plan was originally drawn. We had talked about a duplex and or mobile home on that property. So it was just a concept at the time? Well, basically, I mean, it, it's, I don't know if I'd really call it a concept. I mean, it was a designed plan okay. that would fit whether a duplex is there or a single family home. It just gives the amount of units that it could serve bedroom wise. Um, Again, they do change sometimes. They'll get a drawing up because they do, they'll get an HHE, put it in as a building application. Uh, there is quite often renovations, um, revisions as to even the placement of it, as well as to what it serves. So the concern is that these are inconsistent plans. Mm. Uh, I mean, as far as the HHE being inconsistent, I mean, it may not represent what was actually built there, but what was could be built there could, I, like I said, we've already gotten one revision from them already. It was moved a little bit. Well, it's between, it's between the subsurface wastewater disposal system application and the building permit application. That's where the inconsistency was. As far as the placement of duplexes, saying that they're duplexes, but I mean, that's that, my understanding. Yeah. The building permit application is for a 70 by 14 mobile home with a 12 by 28 Correct. addition. Yeah. Addition, and that's what was approved. It would seem that that would control over the plan, but you could ask for a an updated plan to be submitted if you were going to approve. Thoughts, Steve, on that? Am I all right with the idea of an updated plan? Yeah, is that what you would like to see in this? Well, I'd like, I'd like to see it be consistent, that's yeah. all. But 
we can we can address the HIG no, 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 we can't. plan. So it would only be for us to have an updated sketch plan to go with the building mm -hmm. permit. Point ten inadequate evidence of proper drainage on subsurface wastewater disposal system application. Again, um, that's the HHG. Yep. Sure. That is to go back to the other one, you said it, as far as clarification, what is the clarification that they no longer be considered duplexes and they just should say single family homes on the plan or what are we, is that what, I just want to know as to how I've got a, what it is that you're looking for. I think we're just looking for um, an updated, basically a plot plan to show Yeah, because I do, both of them, I have a revision that was submitted to me um, not too long ago, which, like I said, usually happens as before. Uh, but he ju he does still say duplex on there, so I'm assuming that's what you don't want on there. You don't want a the word duplex, just so I can clarify that that's what we're looking for, or Wait, no, you that, should just that's say a single point. family home. So if we can't if we can't address the subsurface wastewater disposal system application, that is what it is. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're then is there an inconsistency if we can only yes. consider the uh, plan that was submitted with the building permit application? We just w you want an updated plan, which he has uh, the latest well, revision like I, of. Yeah, but like I said, it just says duplex on there. That's what I'm wondering if you. That's what your inconsistency that you're looking for that you want changed. Now the inconsistency is this. <coughs> There's an application here for, for to put a 70 by 14 with a 12 by 28 addition on a piece of property. Mm -hmm. Okay. They submit, along with that, they submitted a uh, wastewater, subsur subsurface wastewater disposal system application, an HHE 200. Mm -hmm. The HHE 200 says that there's going to be four units. Yeah, two units. Mm -hmm. Now that's quite different. Than, than, than the the building uh, permit application. He is also, if you look at it, he's also referring to himself in the future as what he plans on doing on Lot B, which has not been determined yet. And he's ta so tapping into that. He is putting a system in that it doesn't, the state of Maine doesn't dictate you to put a 12 system bedroom system if you wanted to, if you only got a two bedroom house. Oh, I understand that. That's He's showing that his intention is to hook onto that from that lot B, so he has to put that big of a, a system there. Whether it be in the next one, he may decide to use a single family home on that one as well. I look at it as how many bedrooms is it serving, yeah. and that's what I go by. Mm -hmm. More than enough than what he's attaching it to. And anything else in the future is just something that we have to go back and make sure that it doesn't exceed that. Um, the fact, for me, if it's a duplex or a proposed house, I still look at what the bedroom count is that's on the building permit. Is Can the system handle it? He has the ability, if he wanted to, to change it to a multi-unit. If he, if at this point, he decides to... Uh, for some reason, take the trailer off and he comes back and he decides to put a multi-unit on there. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, it, I look at the same thing. Does whatever he's going to put on there going to be serviced by the right amount of bedrooms? Okay. But I just, like I said, I, if you want some changes on there, I just want to know which there, ones you're there, looking for. So there's no way sure to change there's, there's no way to change it to make it consistent. Correct. Uh, 3.11 permit was issued without a DEP certified person to oversee the activity. Um, on that one, 
There was a note at the bottom that subsequent to the building permit being issued, Tammy Knights did hire a DEP certified consultant. However, this person was not listed, so the, the concern is that they were not listed at the time on the building permit, but they did hire a DEP certified consultant. Any questions or concerns regarding that? No. No. <coughs> And I believe that addresses all the permitting issues that were brought up at the last meeting. <coughs> so with that, further discussion? Is there any further discussion from the board members on any of these? <coughs> I don't have any further discussion because these two items are handled within the uh, code officer office. I don't have any further questions. No, I'm okay. You're okay. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion. Can I make a motion that we accept the application as having been complete and that we're acknowledging that it was complete with the conditions that the uh, before certificate of occupancy that code officer ensures that the foundation requirements as per the land use 9K1C and the condition that the floor plan for the addition is added to uh, the file where it is already talking about the addition. I second. Okay. Any, any further discussion on the motion? And to clarify, this is in regards to the meeting from last time of those permit allegations we just went through. Nothing new. Nothing new. Okay. Seconded. We have a vote. All those in favor? Those opposed? Okay, three to one. So now we still need to, as a board, decide <coughs> on the new matters that were brought before us with this latest bit of information from the appellants. Um, as Attorney Katsapigas mentioned, we have options of scheduling another public hearing to go over those. Um, we don't have to consider those because the public hearing was closed. Um, we could <clears throat> we could ask the Knights if if they object to discussion on those. I guess Attorney Katsapigas, is that how you put it? They haven't seen them. Right, they haven't seen them. But right, I mean. I I, 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 I'm not, I'm reluctant to discuss them tonight without the Knights having had the opportunity to go over them and, and perhaps, as you indicated, uh, obtain counsel. I got a question. Are we appealing the appeal? Yeah, I, is, is I, I thought that your motion, <laughs> if I got it right, I thought that the motion was basically denying the appeal and, and finding that this is a completed application. Based on? Based on, well, based on that, but that implied that you were not going to take up any new material. Yeah. Well, what I said was based on the information from the last meeting. Why would you make a decision based upon what you had before you if you were going to take additional information that might come out a different way? I, I, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. My apologies. No, that's all right. Uh, if you want to consider the additional material, maybe what you might want to do is reconsider the motion you mm -hmm. just made and start anew and see where you're going. Because we were trying to find a way, right, just to... You've gone through all of the allegations. All of the last one, the you allegations. went through all the allegations that yep. previously had been made. And you've come to a consensus as to what you think about those. The next question before you vote yes or no on the appeal, because that's really the question before mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. is do you now want to take any additional evidence and all? If you want to consider that, 
then I suggest that you re that you reconsider that motion that was just adopted and bring it back to the deliberation phase where you don't have any clutter then just look motion at to reconsider second if I may you may so we still need to oh they still need a vote on the motion to reconsider yeah okay all those in favor on the motion to reconsider those opposed? <laughs> All right. So we're back to we have addressed the alleged permit violations from the meeting of what was it, July? July 30th. 30th, thank you. We had new information brought before us this week, new uh, alleged violations. So at this point, do we want to schedule another and reopen the public hearing to address those? Do we want to accept this new information? Or do we not want to accept the information because the public hearing was closed? In my opinion, the hearing was closed. We should not accept it. This one? Yep. No. My thinking is if we're going to consider it, we have to reopen the hearing yep. and give the Knights an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to digest this information and deal with it as they will. I can say based on discussion we've had tonight and what I've heard and discussion over the last meeting and things that are brought up. I don't feel the need to reopen the public hearing personally and accept any new information. I agree. <coughs> so the board agrees we're not going to reopen a public hearing. We're not going to accept the new information right. <coughs> that was provided by Attorney Vogel this week. Can we bring the motion back on the floor, the original motion? Do you want to make a motion that you decline to accept the information that was provided on uh, last week, last uh, Tuesday or Wednesday? By Was it David Murch who submitted that? Mm -hmm. uh, David Murch brought in um, this right. piece. Right, that's what I'm talking okay. about. Yeah. I make a motion that we do not accept bring into discussion the new information that was received uh, from David Merch from David Merch last week last week and that we uh, proceed with the motion as for our discussion this evening let's take them two one pieces one, 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 yeah. One, yeah don't yeah, don't complicate it one at a time <laughs> all right so we do, I make a motion about the information not no, to accept the not new to accept the new information or open up a new uh, public a hearing. There, second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. You are now okay. back in deliberation yep. on the appeal with the materials as submitted prior to this evening's meeting, mm -hmm. except for the David Merch materials. And I make a motion that, as per the information we have received and discussed, that we deem the application had been complete, that the appeal has been decided that. Uh, is the appeal granted or denied? It denied. The appeal is denied. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Passes three to one to deny the appeal. Okay. Uh, next up would be to adopt written findings of fact and conclusions of law. We can do one of two things. I've got a draft I've been trying to work on feverishly as you've been speaking, and I can hope that I get it right and give it to you this evening, or what you could do is, uh, we're supposed to get that to the parties in seven days. You could schedule a special meeting for next Monday night. I don't know if there's someone else here in the room you can kick out or whatever for that evening. Uh, but I could have this ready, give it to you in draft form, and then you could mark it up however you wanted to make it reflect what you find. 
uh, but I think I've taken down enough information of what you've said this evening to capture it. I'm just not sure I got every detail right. Okay. So I can give it to you in draft form, give it to all parties in draft form within two days. Uh, and then you have it in time to think about it. You can come back here on. Um, Harry, is this room open next Monday night? I'm it's a holiday. It's a holiday, yeah. of course. Yeah, I'm also looking for the calendar on the town website. Um, the next Monday available after that is going to be the 15th, and there is nothing on the calendar for the 15th, or for the 22nd, or for the 29th. We have a statutory seven-day clock starting. So, okay. Uh, do we have access to a photocopier here, or yes. to a printer? Yes. Uh, we do have, I have access to a printer here, and I'll, we also have a photocopier. Take 10 or 15 minutes and see if we can get this right. Recess. Can we? Yeah. Sure. I'm good with the recess. Okay, motion. Motion to recess. Motion to recess. Sorry. Right. All those in favor? <laughs> Mary, can I get this Thank to you? you. To bring the Zoning Board of Appeals October 1st, 2018 meeting back in session. Um, and we have, everyone's been given copies of the finding of fact, the draft of the finding of fact um, by attorney Katz Vegas. And we're going to go page by page to see if there are any corrections, changes that need to be made. So on page one. The suggestion has been to change already to previously to eliminate any confusion as to the fact that this has already been constructed. Um, it's up to the board. Where are we? Yeah, That's on first paragraph, I'm sorry. First paragraph next to last line, uh, 14 by 70 oh, mobile I home and previously rather than already constructed, uh, go with the board's wishes. We don't have to make motions. I'm fine with it as yeah, already. It doesn't Either way. Fine with okay. Anything else on page one? Page two. Page two? No. Page Anybody? three. I know it could garble toward the end and we'll, uh, I've got a suggestion to fix it, but anything in the first paragraph? <coughs> Second? Third paragraph. Okay, the fourth paragraph, the last sentence should say the town clerk's October 1, 2018 response to attorney Vogel, September, should be a space 28 letter stated that she searched ED, searched town meeting and selectman mm -hmm. records back to 2002, yeah. have a space. Right. Sorry, my typing deficiency is showing there. Um, Where are you? What page? We're looking at page three in the... Fifth line from yeah. the end on page three. The next to last word should be searched ED. Right. Yeah, take those. Sorry. Um, and then beginning the next paragraph, um, I should have, my suggestion to reword that is therefore a motion was made by Warshaw, seconded by Sorelli that the excerpt argument was without merit and the board approved the motion unanimously. And so concludes the Knights could construct or install a type one manufactured home in the lot under the LUO and the SCO as they read when the building permit was issued. Does that fix the... Yes. Grammatical issues I created yes. there. I apologize. And, okay. Page four. Uh, what, let's start. Uh, B, that first paragraph. At the July 30, 2018 public hearing, anything to change there? All right. Under sub one. Is there anything I missed or? No. Nope. Okay. Sub two. Um, okay. 
so we get that. Okay, yeah. sub three, anything I missed? This is the floor plan. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Sub four. Sub five. Sub six. Yes, I'm sorry. At the top of page five, sub six. Okay. Seven. And that goes into A. This is a subsurface wastewater disposal system. B. Mm -hmm. C. E. Mm -hmm. One question I had, did you want to address this with the condition of approval or not? Uh, that they come in and just give you the name and certification number of the person? I believe that was provided. That was already provided? Okay, so we don't need a condition of approval. Was that for, was it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Sorry, I'll yeah. delete that sentence then with your permission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. E, uh, seven on the top of page six. When we get down to the conditions of approval, do we have them all correct? That would be uh, before issuance number one, before issuance of a certificate of occupancy, the Knights shall install a slab and foundation in accordance with the land use ordinance uh, with the six inch concrete slab and tie downs. Do we need to include that piece or is that subject to? They, I mean, can I give them a drawing of it? I mean, I can. I that's what they're can, going to submit. Yeah, they okay. can retype, re uh, print it out again, and put it in the folder. But that's what originally what I gave them. Two that uh, they'll okay. present a survey to the CEO showing the right to use the driveway or shall relocate the driveway. Uh, three, uh, present a four plan prior to issuance of an occupancy for the addition. <laughs> and four. Uh, will present a revised plan of the lot showing that it's within the shoreland zone LRR01. Is that all consistent with the board's mm -hmm. determination? Yes. Okay, so. If I, if I can. Sure. On number seven on that page six, third sentence up, it says colorable, right? Mm -hmm. is that, um, forgive me. But That's is that, correct. That is correct. Learn something new every day. 
Thank you. So again, I don't want to be making the board's decision for it. I was trying to draft something that would mm -hmm. comprehend what the board was doing. Is this consistent with the board's? Yes, yes good job. Yes, it is. I thought you did a great job, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Do you have to move to, to, to accept this? Or you yes, uh, you move to accept that as your findings as amended, as we've revised it here. And I've made the revisions on, on this. And I'm, I'll give it to Mary to print out so that the chair can sign it before this evening. And, We'll be all set. But if you want to move to adopt those, uh, that in, the written decision. So moved. Seconded. Second. All those in favor? All right. And if you want to discuss other business or whatever that you have while we're getting this printed out. Hey, Scott, we have um, code enforcement officer communications. There is no other appeals at this moment. So there's nothing good, nothing new to discuss, uh, nothing coming up. Um, had some interest in one, but he chose to do something else to make it um, compliant. So. As far as um, what's keeping you the most busy, what's in town in general? Is it new new construction? Yes. What do you, yeah. is that what you're seeing? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a few that have come to light about some setback issues, um, but we're kind of, I gave them the option of what they can do, and so we're just waiting to see if, which, which option they choose, either tear down or come for a variance. Okay. okay. But like I said, that's nothing that's that was just discussed probably when up in the past week or two, so we won't see it for a while. Okay. Do we have to stay in session for you to complete this? Uh, no, you can sign this after the session's mm -hmm. done. What we'll do is uh, you... Then I'll just move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? 